Hello viewers, you know what this video is about, you read the title, so let's get into exploring the n-body simulation. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what the n-body simulation is, it is a simulation of gravitational attraction between objects or bodies of a system. It makes use of Newton's gravitation equation as shown, where we have the magnitude of force between two objects is equal to the gravity, gravitational constant times the mass of one object to the mass of another, all over the distance between two objects squared. And to further make sense of this, I will draw a system with a set of three objects that are each attracted to one another by the force of gravity. And for every subset of two bodies, um, the gravity equation can be applied so that each body is attracted to another, one another with the same magnitude of force. So I'll draw vectors to express this. We have a pair of vectors with the same magnitude in different directions to show that each of or that these two objects are attracted to each other with the same um, force. And now I can apply this to the other uh, objects in the system. And now what we have is called a three-body problem where like when you pass two body when you when you pass two bodies in an n-body simulation, it becomes more chaotic and unpredictable of where the particles will end up or what their velocities will be. So this is where we're at right now. And then I think now we can we can transition to the actual simulation element of the video, and it'll also provide a better visualization of what the n-body simulation is. So now let's get into the actual simulation element of the video. We're, we're in a Unity game engine, and on the right side, we have a two-dimensional view of the simulation. On the left, we have a three-dimensional view. Um, so I'm just going to start running the simulation now. And as you can see, all the particles are now starting at rest and are moving towards the center by Newton's gravitation equation, gravity equation, and are all pulled in to that one blob. And in that blob, you can see those particles are colliding and are somewhat inelastic or partially inelastic as they are sticking and collisions were basically made uh, very easy because we're in an indie game engine and uh, we can control how the all the code is basically pre-made for collisions and most physics mechanics as well um, and through the physics material we applied on uh, the particles, I can uh, control how the coefficient of, elast of elasticity that's applied on it. And right now we're at 0.5, but I can make it more inelastic and have it be at 0.1, where all the particles are losing more energy when they collide, making it more, more stable to this uh, big blue blob right here. And I can also make it more elastic if I make it 0.9 right there. And uh, now it's more chaotic with particles bouncing off each other at faster rates and losing less energy into collisions. And it's losing its structure a bit more. Um, and then also you might notice right here that the particles have different colors. This is due because of their velocities in this code. It is made so that we have a gradient right here where red is correlated to higher velocities and blue is correlated to lower velocities. And I guess now is a good time to get into the actual code of the simulation. So right now I'm going to quickly run through all this code. So first we have these public variables and they're made public so we can easily interact with these um, variables and the Unity game engine really easily. So right here I can make this particle variable public and then I can change the properties of that particle in the Unity game engine such as the coefficient of elasticity or the mass of each particle. And then right here um, I can also set the gravitational constant, I can change the gravitational constant in the Unity game engine and change also during mid simulation. And Right here, I can also make the gradient in the Unity game engine and change the co and change how the color is correlated to the speed. And then 
void start is what is co is what's called on the beginning of the whole simulation. It basically initializes all the variables and sets all the particles in their initial spot. So right here we initialize gravity to be 10th to negative fifth power. It's not the actual um, constant used in Newton's gravitational equation, but I guess found this one works better to making the whole simulation more fluid and less chaotic. And then right here I have um, I instantiate the first particle at zero 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 to origin of the simulation, and then I make um, its mass 50 times that of the default mass. And I'm also adding it to the particle list when I instantiate it because the particle list is used later in the whole calculation of force between um, all the particles. We'll get to that part later. And then right here we have um, we're rendering a disk uh, using polar coordinates. And then right here we're rendering a sphere using spherical coordinates. And I'll just quickly show what I'm talking about. Right here we're having a sphere and a disk made out of all the particles and bodies of the simulation. And it kind of looks like Saturn. I just made it look like Saturn because it kind of looked cool and gave me a chance to actually play with the spherical coordinates and polar coordinates and uh, the whole Unity game engine. And then going back to the code, um, we have to calculate force a method, which is applied between two particles. And first, in that process calculating force, we take the displacement vector between the two particles, as shown here. And then we take the magnitude of that displacement vector to get distance. And then we can actually solve for the force vector between the two particles by multiplying the mass of the two particles, and then multiplying by the gravitational constant and dividing by distance squared, and then multiplying that by the displacement uh, unit vector. And we multiply basically the magnitude times the direction vector of uh, the force, and that gives us the force vector. And then we apply that force vector to the particle. And the other particle in the system, we apply force in the opposite direction, which is why we have the negative one right here. And we apply that force to make it like an attraction force between two particles. And then on this um, avoid update function on every frame, we are going to run this function. And it essentially iterates through the particles we made uh, earlier. and um, it iterates through that, and then it iterates again through all the particles in the list, so then we can calculate the force of attraction between one particle and every other particle in the system. And we have a bunch of vectors that we're essentially adding to that force vector. And then we're getting that force vector of which direction it's going, where particle is going dependent on all the other particles in that system. And then we're having uh, the retaining the color of this particle to match the speed of which is it's going at, which is this code right here. And then also you might notice that um, the more particles we add, that the slower it's going to go because it's an n squared time complexity because we're having essentially all the particles in one list times all the particles in the list again because like n squared meaning the more particles we add, the quadratic, the time it'll take to render this frame will increase quadratically. And in the, when you try to add more particles, that just means it'll go really slow, which is why Unity is not an optimal solution for coding this game engine. And this is why I tried a different environment, which is what we're going to continue on to now. Um, this is, this code right here uses OpenGL and C++ to render a simulation. And in addition to using OpenGL and C++, it also makes use of this thing called the Barnes Hut algorithm, which makes use of trees uh, to optimize this simulation, and I'm going to get into that right now. So now I'm going to explain the Barnes Hut algorithm uh, right now. So first we have this uh, coordinate plane with four different points in it. We have B and C in quadrant one, zero particles in quadrant two, three particles in quad or uh, particle A in quadrant three and particle B in quadrant four. Um, and then we have this tree on the right side, which is analogous to which which has um, the letters are located in analogous to location in that graph. So 
we have this root node right here that kind of represents the center of the entire grid. And then it has a children node where it's the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. We can see A being quadrant 3 is in quadrant 3 node, and then D being quadrant 4 is in the quadrant 4 node. And B and C are children of the quadrant 1 node because four part there's already two particles in that one node, so we have to subdivide it further. And I'll draw this out right here. So we have uh, subdividing this further right here. And we're kind of making a new grid as well, which determines the location of those particles in, or those particles in the tree or nodes in the tree. So we have particle B in the third quadrant, so it becomes the third quadrant right here. And we have particle C in the fourth quadrant, which comes to the fourth quadrant right here. And and then the actual Born Saw algorithm uh, is used to calculate the force of attraction between the particles between each other by using this tree to make it more efficient. So I'll run through an example right now. So let's say we have try to find part of the gravitational force of attraction between particle A and all the particles in this tree. So we can we can uh, start by doing that for a depth search of this tree as we um, are essentially iterating through all the uh, particles or all the you have, um, particles that way. So we start with the root node, then we go to the leftmost node, and then we go left again. And then we find zero nodes there. Well, actually, no, first we start the root node, then we go to this left node right here. And this left node right here has a green, uh, represents the center of mass between B and C. So then I can just write it out in a quarter plane. And then we're finding traction between A and these particles right here. So first we're going to test if these particles are close enough to act as one particle, which we can find attraction between A and that particle. And if we can do this, then we eliminate uh, two of the calculations. We can just reduce that to like half, basically, the amount that we need. And and then the process of seeing if we can do that is by using this equation, where you take the distance between point A and that center of mass, which is called point, let's call that D, and then divide that by S, which is uh, this length right here. And that's kind of analogous of how many subdivisions we have. So we have like more particles, which can be like a lot more subdivisions, but right now we're kind of at one, so that's, um, so we're going to call that S. And then D divided by S has to be less than some sort of threshold, we'll call it theta, for um, it to count as one particle. And if that is less than that threshold, then we can uh, count this green particle right here as the center of mass between particles B and C with their combined mass and bind force of trash between A and that particle. And then we, and that, that force factor that's applied on that particle will be applied to B and C and that force and also affected on A as well in that direction. And then so we kind of we're able to use this tree to kind of reduce the calculations we need to do as it's shown there. And then for normal um, and when we continue traversing this tree we'll go through this node right here and go here. So it's empty so we'll just skip that and go here. Same node as A. So we're going to skip that, and we're at node D. And at node D, we have, um, well, it's the kind of, it has no children node, so we're going to take the force of traction between the two particles, and just add the vectors to A and D. And then, yeah, that's the Born's algorithm, and so we're making a tree, and so a tree has a time complexity of log of n, and then, uh, or at least mo uh, a balanced tree, or most frequently you have and we'll see log of n, and then we're searching through the tree n times, which is n particles. So we need to calculate the force of attraction particles, so that's n times. That's n log of n is our time complexity right there. And that is a subset of um, the n squared complexity. So it's essentially faster. It's also uh, less, it's generally less than the n squared complexity. But also, it can sometimes be the n squared complexity if the tree is, uh, in some cases, it'll act as n squared complexity if the tree is an optimal, or if it's just the particles aren't in a good spot space to do it, really. And yeah, that's the one's algorithm. So now I'm going to explain the new OpenGL C++ code that I made as well. So I'm going to go through it real quickly because you've already seen the more simplified uh, Unity code I made earlier. So uh, right here I, I'm importing all the libraries, then right here I have open or GLS L share, share language. And this function updates the particles based on their velocities and changes their uh, XYZ coordinates accordingly. And then we have int main which runs the which first starts by re uh, setting up the OpenGL window and then rendering the initial states of all the particles to be at like a spherical coordinate size in the Unity version as well. Um, and then right here I have DT, just kind of the time increment you get in, like when you do parametrics when you're incrementing T. It's kind of like that. And <coughs> uh, frame count is used in just a uh, framework calculation. And right here we have um, this while loop, which is basically our update render loop, which um, every frame, this is the code that runs for every frame right here. And I set it rotate to be at 45 degree on every axis, so we can have a nice two dimensional view of it. And right here we have a tree, octree, or we have a octree 
um, variable right here. And it's an octree instead of a quadtree, as shown earlier, because it's three-dimensional. So in three-dimensional space, we're going to have, if you try to imagine a cube and try to split it up, we're going to have eight quadrants. And that's going to create eight nodes, or that means for every, for when you make the Barnside algorithm, it's going to subdivide to eight nodes per by, by eight quadrants. And yeah, all that code is um, not on this file. I made it in a separate file. So octree SVP, CR also some of the vector code is CR as well, vector, and then uh, just particle code right there. And if you want to review that, it's also in my GitHub page. So that's there. And then um, also this is kind of an important part of the code. This is like extremely important, important because we have um, the conditions that say how that determine how the boring style algorithm is used. So right here, this kind of shows the space of the the bounds of which we expect the particles to fit in by the gravity simulation, and then the threshold that I was showing earlier of the boring style algorithm. Right, right now it's zero, so that's going to be an n-squared complexity because it's not actually being implemented, really. And then for the rest of it, it's a uh, right here. I'm right, it's just rendering the vertices to the screen and rendering it with every vertex of white color with the location of each particle is rendered. And this is just calculating the frame rate right here. And I'll do the show right now. So this is with a uh, threshold of zero, meaning I'm going to render it with a threshold of zero, meaning there's going to be an answer complexity. So it's going to be very slow when I render this. In fact, I can also show the frame rate right here. So 4 FPS. Not that fast. And when we render it with the uh, point set algorithm, it's a bit faster with frame rate of 8. Although, one thing I should note with the void set algorithm is that the higher the threshold, the less accurate the actual simulation is, but the void set algorithm is more of an approximation in order to reduce the time it takes to calculate the gravity simulation in order to render it in real time. So we, this kind of doubles the speed of it, so it's kind of an improvement. But if I get even more particles in the simulation, it will still render very slowly. So the way most people render these simulations by like rendering a million particles, they accomplish this by using some sort of CUDA optimization, which is using GPU and having all the math run in parallel. And then also, like math and code running in parallel, and then also they use just generally better computers. I think sometimes they have like arrays of uh, computers and PCs just set up to like do simulations like this. Um, yeah, I guess this is like the main. That's essentially all of the end body simulation and how we can use the point algorithm to increase the speed of it. So now I think I'm just gonna end this video with a bunch of gravity simulations, and they look really cool. So I'm just gonna show it. So, bye.